Hello there people of the internet. My name is Udur Jagero and this is Dialogues Jagero. I am with Doreen, a Ugandan lady who knows a little more more than the average person about sex and about men. And you know, today we are going to be talking about how to pleasure men. We have talked so much about how to pleasure women on this podcast with uh, with Mr. Matheka and the men are not very happy. I mean, we are we've got an overload of information about pleasuring women, but nobody talks about pleasuring us. You see, so welcome to podcast to this podcast. Thank you. And How are you thank doing? Thank you for inviting me. I'm doing very well. Yeah. yeah. Uh you you are you told me that you're Ugandan. Yes. I can see that. You know. How do you see that? Uh mannerisms, oh, perhaps. Okay. You've been here for how long? Ten years. Yeah. Two presidential terms. That's a long time. <laughs> yes. You know? Yeah. Uh, I was in Uganda sometimes back and I went for a massage. Okay. I don't know whether I regret it, but what I felt was amazing. Okay. I had a very bad erection for a very long time. It took a long time. Oh man, that was the hardest erection I've ever had because that woman had nilutic buttocks <laughs> and she sat on my back <laughs> naked. <laughs> No, what kind yeah. of massage was that? Massage. What was the name of the massage? I honestly don't remember. Was that a massage? It was. It was a massage. They say it's full body massage. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and just she sits on your ass, sits on your legs. I mean, do crazy things with her boobs. Man. That wasn't a massage. It was a massage. Be honest with us. And there was no, I had a, 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 a I was, I was having a, a very, a very, very serious erection and she didn't do anything. Yes, she, she told me that this is, this is the full body massage and nothing else comes with it. Okay. You know? Yeah. And that is, that is why I still insist up to date that it was you, a massage. Okay. <laughs> 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 no, there was, there was, there was nothing. There was, there were no add-ons. Yes. You know. Yeah. And uh, I want us to talk about Ugandan women. Yeah. But before that, I want to talk about yourself. Yeah. Uh, what do you do? Well, I I do very many things, but yeah. um, my the the most that I do, I'm a holistic sexologist. Um, and everything I, I do stems from holistic sexology. Yeah. What does that mean? A little bit of a expounding would help. Well, um, there's 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 sexuality, there's sexology. Can I tell you something <clears throat> before you go on? Yeah. A lot of these terms that are thrown around are are not understood by by Come pedestrians yeah, like right. us. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So when you are talking about when you're saying that you are into holistic sex sex, sex what? Sexology. Yeah. yeah, we really don't know what that means. Okay. Mm. Well, in so as much as I also like to say that it's not like I will talk to everybody on the street. Um, so, are you a pedestrian? Mm, I am pedestrian in knowledge. Okay. Um, holistic sexology <coughs> means, or rather, is the understanding of your sexuality, um, knowing that it's not synonymous from the rest of your well-being. Right? Uh, we could talk about good sex, Ugandan women, Kenyan women, how to pleasure men. And then we are only talking about from the physical aspect. Like you're saying, you don't consider that experience to have been, a mas rather, you consider it to have been a massage because you've only been taught that sex is only penetrative. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you're limited. And so you could not allow your mind to release your, your tension because you're waiting for penetration. And I go beyond that, that sex is not just physical penetration. But if we open our minds, we can find that there are so many stages of orgasming um, and sexual pleasure. And it's our mind that frees us. If your mind frees you, you can release tension. Because that's sexual, that's tension, that's uh, bodily tension. Like she allowed you to build it up. Probably it was stress and whatever it is, it came through tension. And your mind stopped yourself from releasing it. So holistic sexology goes beyond in explaining to people and showing people how much more there is to their orgasmic potential. Mm. Yeah. Amazing. And how the rest of their life and their well-being affects that. Yeah. Mm. You have been in Kenya and mm. you told me uh, outside of this podcast that you understand a Kenyan woman and you understand a Ugandan woman. Now, what we have heard about <laughs> Ugandan women is that they are well taught. 
in matters of pleasuring men. Okay. Uh, is that is that is that a myth, or that is something that actually happens there? Then number two, mm. you, would you mind to differentiate between a Kenyan woman and a Ugandan woman? <laughs> well, that is very important. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Um, I would like to dispense that I'm not a man. I've not tested and tried Kenyan women in terms of <laughs> physical sex. Uh, yeah. <laughs> because that you're, supposed, you're supposing that I have known Kenyan women sexually. I have. You no can. You <laughs> can. You can know somebody from data. Yes, but I'm going. Yes, I know yes. what you mean. <laughs> I just wanted to, to put a disclaimer there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that I don't go all the way with Kenyan women. <laughs> Neither do I with all Ugandan women. Yeah. But um, what I found here, like when I moved here, I went to the gym. And any chance any woman would get with me, they would ask me questions. So how do you squat? Is it true every woman can squat? They would ask me questions. Is it true that Ugandan women are blah, 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 you know? And then it's not one, two, three women. Then it occurred to me, actually, these people are not joking because what we consider to be very simple was really very profound for them. And then I told myself, how about you actually solve a problem? Because there's a problem, you know? And so when you ask me, is there a difference between um, Kenyan women and Ugandan women? Is it a myth that Ugandan women have been trained? Again, holistically. So what I find is that um, the Ugandan woman has been trained to learn how to take care of her body. She's been trained to learn how to love her body. So she falls in her body. What makes it easy for a man to enjoy a woman is when a woman is able to receive a man. Mm. You cannot receive pleasure when you do not know how to sit in your body. Right? So she's taught how to eat right for her body. She's taught about her vagina. She's taught about her womb. She's taught about herbs that she needs to use, you know, um, uh, to be able to take care of her vagina. Yeah. Um, she's taught about infections. She's taught about her cycle. The moment she goes in her menses, there's the talk, the walk, and then the walk is among herbs, and then she's told that herb will treat this, that herb will treat that. There's urgency. So she's given first-hand information to take care of her body. And then she's taught about her body, the internal part of the body, the womb, that is empowering because then she's told how the womb is divine. It's not a place every man just enters. Because you take care of it, you nurture it, not just every man enters there. So there's urgency. And now because of that, they, I find that they are better at being vulnerable, at surrendering to pleasure, surrendering to a man. They're more mindful. Mm. Those um, are key aspects. I think a man likes to feel like the king of the jungle. I feel like when a man is coming, a man wants to, to explore, he wants to conquer, a woman needs to receive, a, a woman needs to be conquered. She needs to be in a place where she can be conquered, as opposed to having two people who are chasing, right? There has to be a symbiotic element where he is conquering and she needs to, yes, play mystery, but be able to be vulnerable enough to be conquered, so the art of receiving, I find, is better and easier among Ugandan women than I find it here among Kenyan women. Uh, that's orgasmic. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I don't leave you like the lady that massaged you. My gentleman, who you? Who you are in the but we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Like, why didn't you release? <laughs> I did a little bit. Okay, okay so reveal, reveal. <laughs> <laughs> reveal everything. You die. I know, right? You, you die. You're not lying to us. I took many days up. Mm. You took many days with an erection. You know, you know, you know the thing, <laughs> what, I, what happened. There is an erection that you have yeah. that, 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 that releasing would have to be natural. Okay. You see, mm. and one of the things that I like that 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 was very interesting about about that woman because that was not the the, the last time I was going for a massage. Mm. The next time I went for a massage, I did not go for that one <laughs> for the body to body because I thought that was gonna kill me, give okay. me heart attack. Yeah, you see, yeah. the next time I went for uh, just the normal one, okay. and again that normal one was 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 exotic. Okay, you know mm. there is a. Uh, <coughs> When when you get a massage in Kenya, mm. uh, the woman is very conscious of, us, of herself. Yeah, she's trying to. She doesn't 
I, I feel like in Kenya, women do not want to see an erection when they're doing a massage. Okay. Ugandan women really do not care. And I think they expect it. That if you move so well on a man's body mm. and touch them properly, mm. they will have an erection. And it is not, it is okay for them to have an erection. This second woman saw me having a very serious erection mm. and she just played her game the mm. whole time, okay. putting my dick out of the way, doing mm. everything out of the way yeah. and, and, and understanding that this is what it is. You know, at some point you can't even, you, if, you, if you turn the other way, then you can't lie on your, on your stomach because yeah. where do you take your... <laughs> she would know definitely how to start you off. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So uh, the question that I wanted to ask about that is that when this kind of education, mm. how does it happen in Uganda? Um, because it's cultural education, it's slow. It's not like you have it one time. The fact that it's, it's, it's open, um, what I find, if I talk about sex, even just saying that word, you, I will most definitely see most women, Kenyan women looking down. Yes. Right. Um, so the, the conversation is a little bit open. It doesn't mean that we walk on the street talking about sex. You know, there's there's it's 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 if, if I'm if I'm with other women and and I talk start talking about sex, it's not like they will frown upon you. Right. Um, as opposed to how you find it. Yeah. So I find that when it's cultural language, it's it's just an everyday thing. It's part of your life. It's part of the way you live, you know. If I see a girl and how she's seated, there's a way I will talk to her because I'm trying to correct posture. I'm correcting posture because she's going to need to be able to have a certain kind of posture later. If I see how a girl is eating, I probably will worry about her, um, um, the acidity in her body. So I tell her, oh no, lately you need to be eating more probiotics. You need, to, you need to stop eating too much junk. You need to stop even the conversation around food is geared towards what kind of woman am I grooming so the grooming is is communal mm. and it happens almost every day in everything that they do you know so you will see a girl who has started her menses and the way she walks you probably know she's she has an infection or she's not taking care of herself the way she smells um the order her body order and then you know that this conversation and it's open and then it's not shaming it's received so you expect that my auntie if she's around she's going to tell me this thing so it's received positively as opposed to if an auntie said, eh, but um, are you sure you bathe three times a day or two times a day? And then somebody will feel a lot of shame. I guess you would experience it in a culture where it's not the language that is spoken, but because it's expected, you'll be like, that is giving me, she's seeing something I'm not able to see for myself. So it's received. I feel like the conversation is organic. Mm. I feel like it's just because it's communal conversation, it's something in every way they live. The way you walk, the way you sit, um, the, the way you eat your food, the way you speak, um, the way you express yourself, um, you know, it's groomed in all those aspects. It's very interesting because it, it, sexual education, you'd say, is not very mature in Kenya, yeah. culturally. Yeah. And that is interesting because uh, we have Bantus in Uganda yeah. and we have Nilots in Uganda and then we have Bantus in Kenya and then we have Nilots here. So I'm just, it's very interesting where that kind of cultural education, uh, where Kenyans missed it. I think what I found, now that you ask me, I feel Kenyans are a hugely religious community. Hmm. And it's a beautiful thing, right? However, it also comes with its own hindrances. There's a lot of shaming, religious shaming that comes from, that comes upon their bodies. So when I'm trying to talk to a Kenyan woman about her sexuality, we have to debunk a lot of myths about what's right, what she thinks about herself, what society thinks about her. If she had a baby before marriage, she has a lot of shame around her. If she had sex before a certain age, there's a lot of shame around her. I talk to them. They are not nurtured um, during their menstruation. Um, no one talks to, them about, to, talks to them about what it means to be a woman, um, healthy womanhood, what it means to be feminine. You know, if there's any help, it's just giving her pad and telling her you can't throw this and that and there but there's nobody who takes her side and tells her now you've become a woman a beautiful creation now you have a space called a womb where you're going to create with god at some later time you know so take care of this place now you are a woman you're going to have a, a cycle you need to eat like this you need to eat like that you're going to have beautiful emotions um you know so things are shamed around her womanhood i find when women are disconnected from their wombs to begin with. And so what I find is more of casual sex around the Kenyan woman. 
that comes from detachment from her own femininity and her own womanhood, right? Yeah, so um, the shaming makes people dissociate from their bodies or rather makes people run away from their bodies. The fear of what society will say or this, uh, the sin element, you're a sinner when you do this, you're a sinner when you do that. And you know that makes people rush into sex faster, right? There's asexuality, um, you know, among people when they're not taught well what healthy sex is, what sexual language is. I talk to young girls about uh, puberty. And there's so many women who not bring their kids to me because I'm attached to a, an element called sexology. Yet actually, I'm teaching the girls to appreciate their sexual bodies. I'm teaching them so about their emotions. they find that one problematic? Problematic. What, what, who is she? What is she going to teach our daughters? You know, and I can tell you for a fact, very few will bring them around. So we are repeating the same problem we are coming from. They don't understand healthy sexual language and then and then what and then sex itself. They don't deficient the two. They put the same word. So when I talk to them about sensuality, sexuality, sexology, they've not even taken a second to understand it. So it's not in our culture, Kenya here, um, to be able to really appreciate sexuality, our bodies. And the same thing with men. Because um, I'm, I, I know you want me to talk more about how to pleasure men, but when women are complaining about men, when I'm, I'm teaching them about surrender and vulnerability, they say, but surrender to who? In one second is already inside. I am trying to be vulnerable and I want to be mindful and surrender to him, but he's pop, 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 pop. Hey. Inside. So that's all we want. No, but that's not yeah. that right. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you're not going to enjoy what you're looking for. If, even if I come to pleasure you, yeah. and I am not going to bring my feminine energy upon you, if I'm not going to... You talked about the Ugandan ladies and how they massage. I'll get uh, to that and why the difference between that. So if I'm not going to fall in love with myself and then put that love into you, then you're rushing it, and then you're not going to enjoy me. For women, as um, I think you have understood, penetrative sex is not all that there is for us. But then you want a woman who is receiving you. How do I receive you when I don't know how to receive pleasure? How do I give what I don't know how to feel? So the same, um, uh, the same problem that women have in this culture, men have as well. And I'm not saying men should have known, because if culture doesn't teach its men, who is going to teach them? It's, we are going to be left to the internet. Right? And as it is going to be pornography. Pornography for women looks like rape. It looks like torture. It looks like there's just no sensuality in that space. So we don't watch that stuff. But that's where you get your knowledge from. Now you're coming to me who is learning how to be mindful and to be sensual. Yet for you coming with a marathon, my, my, um, uh, spirit, rather splinting spirit. Yeah? So it's the same thing. Even men have not been taught how to receive a woman and how to pleasure a woman. The same culture that has not taught women Bef has not before, taught men. Before we started, you said that uh, the Ugandan women find it very easy to squat. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And yet other other parts of the world are yeah. finding it so difficult. Yeah. They don't know how to approach it. Although lately, I must tell you, for the last 10 years I've been here, I don't know who else is doing the work. I'm not saying it's true about Kenyan women anymore. There's so many Kenyan women now who can squat. Again, disclaimer, I have not tested them or tried them, but I know it's not as bad as it was when I had just come. Because anywhere, when you talk about it, it was more of, no, it's not for every women woman. Women are becoming better at sex. Um, you know, women are becoming better at receiving pleasure. Women are using their voices now. They are drawing boundaries. They're asking for what they want. They're able to tell you what is not feeling good. The more empowered a woman gets, the more she is. Because I believe squatting is also 50% on the woman's part. For me, mm. I don't believe it's 50% on the man's part. Man, if I don't drink probiotics, if I don't drink water, am I going to squat stones? Even if you touch and fondle, nothing. Ha! Huh. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Now we are talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, so a woman, a man will be sweating, looking for water in desert, in, a, in desert land. I need to be able to take care of my body. I need to be able to eat right. I need to mind my hormones. It needs to be a day or please, day. Please, please talk a little bit more about that. I believe when a woman takes care of her body, the glands that produce fluids are easy to just produce fluids. When, when a woman takes care of her body, first of all, she's body positive. 
she believes i believe i'm wet you know if i drink a glass of of juice that i know is going to heal me already i have power in myself so i will just put myself there knowing i am a wet woman right uh. but if i don't do anything about my body i'm going to be wondering am i wet am i wet am i wet you know so it's self doubt keeps you in your head it doesn't allow you to go in your body so you can be able to surrender but when i i have urgency if i eat right for my body if i take care of my body if i take care of my hormones mostly for women it's hormones because our hormones determine uh, whether we are dry or wet estrogen if it's really low it you will not be you will not you will not be you know wet progesterone levels if they're very low your libido levels will be low so a woman has a cycle meaning a woman is cyclic we're not linear like men you know for you you're the same for us our hormones change four stages of a cycle that change our moods our energy and our capacity to be wet mm. right Preaches. exactly so if a woman doesn't know her body she's going to be she's going to be dependent on media on 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 on, on, on external factors you know having to insert other things in her body but if a woman knows her body if a woman nurtures her body she's ready here day or day can you talk a little bit about because i think uh, for women who are listening to this podcast they'll be wondering how do i do that how do i have the liquids in me yeah you know can mm. you talk a little bit more that but i feel like we're talking a little bit more about women but now we we are crossing we are just after you answer that we are yeah. crossing over to men i think also it helps men because then it gives you less work if a woman takes care of her body you're not going to work that hard ah you know so uh, one of the ways <laughs> in which you take care of a man how to pleasure a man is take care of yourself If I take care of my mind, I'm going to make it easy for you to convince me or to turn me on. But if I'm rigid and I I'm passionate I'm a perfectionist and I stay in my head, I'm making your work hard. You're going to have to come up with a lot of prose and poetry to turn me on. So if I want to teach women how to pleasure men, I teach them how to pleasure themselves or to find pleasure in themselves and make work easy for the man. And one of them is to take care of their bodies. If they take care of their bodies they need to mind their cycle eat according to the cycle feed their bodies with foods that make their cycles easy it's as easy as finding seeds and nuts to eat so that they have a healthy flow of these hormones it's as easy as eating probiotics every day our mothers in all cultures have done research on cultures here right all cultures have probiotic foods fermented foods but we come to town and we become so modern and these probiotic foods look like they're not so cool so we want to go to supermarkets and pick things which are making us dry mm. because they've been branded to look nice but there's nothing in them but the probiotics that our mothers used to make in those nyungus those pots that they used to put in 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 their in the homes and all that that's where the magic is you know i could mention many of them um of, of course now they've t- been turned into alcohol but busa moratina um that probiotic from from for the kalenjins is um is mursik mursik yes those are foods that make women wet ah oh. right mm-hmm. if they make uh, yogurt from home apart from this yogurt which has a lot of sugar too much sugar that has even been hidden they just go to the supermarket you know they said we drink yogurt then they pick the yogurt which is too sweet nothing find yogurt which is organic made from home take it drink it you will not be hard to turn on mm. and that's the difference between ugandan women randis women and the other parts of uh, of the world where there's not enough squatting because they are their diet those cultures are wild um, in, their diet is, is heavy too. exactly it's heavy on probiotics cheeses fermented cheeses everything that is fermented fermented grains fermented um dairy and it's in every meal so three times a day a woman is eating something fermented that alkalizes her body and takes her away from being an acidic being to being a well balanced uh, woman what is an acidic being acidic is when you eat so much starch for dinner okay let me even just mention it realistically yes they are eating chapati and there's nothing wrong with that but then they're eating dry food no liquids no soup because the food here is nyama which is dry the skuma which is dry ugali which is dry and then a man is looking for water that woman ah 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 yeah breakfast gidai which is dry chapati which is dry mandazi which is dry then you expect water in that woman at the end of the day Well what is where is the squat coming from now where stones you touching and then i keep thinking okay if, if you're to touch such a woman it's like pallets of stone ah. <laughs> 
no let's be serious about that it we need they, to they, feed that, the body that thing that they take in Uganda in the morning it's yeah. called what um you're, to, you're talking about kombucha no there is the mm. other katogo is it katogo food uh, the food that is mixed with meat and yeah and there is soup yeah the soup for us it's the soup if this the meat the food is not soupy there's soup before the meal or the soup after the meal or there's there's kombucha before the meal or there's kombucha after the meal or there's yogurt or um you know like any any and i see a lot of, of milk going on in uganda exactly. people drink but a lot of ferme- milk they do mostly uh the fermented bit not the one that is not fermented you know so it's a woman knowing herself and we have in a sensation we can even tell when we are almost getting dry like if you if i'm to make love and i only i'm going to release this glass i am getting to dry land so i have the sensation of that before i get completely dry i will just rescue myself there are herbs there are boutiques that they take holy basil um you know they, they have boutiques that they take so that they can be able to also be calm and then when they are calm the brain is able to allow the glands to release fluids and then you will be a fluid person you will not have to be forcing you know and wishing it comes around it's yeah, just for us pattern. Kenyan men we are tired of the ones doing this hard work and mm. we go there do our five minutes of hard work mm. nothing comes out yeah. and we are blamed yeah. you know i feel like women here are too fast they mind the money more than they mind other aspects of life and i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that that's the mm. other difference we balance it um i want to look for money but i also need to have time to take care of my body right so i find when you give solutions to people here they say you ni kazi ngumu a lot of work. So they want over the counter stuff. They want the quick stuff. Quick stuff will never work because guess what? Mentally, you know you're tweaking it. Mentally, you know you're just dealing with the moment now. You need to do something that allows you to be in pleasure with your body all the time whether there's a man or not. Whether there is a man or not. Or not. You need to walk around like you 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 know you 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 own springs of water between your legs. You need to you know oh. you need to talk to clients like you you need to you need to walk around with a lot of sensuality in your body whether there's a man or not a man needs to find you when you're in the element not you preparing oh he's coming around now i'm going home no you need to be there you need to be it in everywhere that you live mm. yeah but then then there are things that that uh, you know when you I was telling you before we sat on this podcast that i'm seeing a lot of uh, uh couple teaching on uh, on Netflix about yeah. how to pleasure man. Mm-hmm. Now we are on the now 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 we are here. It's not there is the there is the there is the training of taking the 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 the, pro, the probiotics. Probiotics, yeah. You know, fermented foods. Fermented foods. Easy. Is yeah. there a way I can make it easy pedestrian? Yeah. Did I say it for the pedestrian person? Yes, 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 yes. You are all right now. You know, one of the things we suffer a lot are the are the jargons in this field. Mm. So it it passes us because now to do it's when I'm knowing that actually fermented stuff is what actually is called. And it's not only good for women alone. Sorry to um, if I cut you, but it's yeah. also good for men. Uh, because also women complain about the quality of sperm that gets into the hey, low air. sperm count low sperm count sometimes it's too acidic it burns you it leaves you burning and it's supposed to have been a but man there's, there's a lot of itching and burning going on oh, yeah? when you guys don't eat probiotics when you don't drink enough water you also burn us ah mm. we are doing acids mm-hmm. instead of doing the the the, mm, the, the, the right know? protein hey. uh, laden kind of you know? cement eh hey. So ah. probiotics are also good for kids. They're not just good for women alone. They're good for men as well. Mm. Mm. So the, your question again. Yes. We are with the men now. The men the uh, Mr. Mateka has been talking a lot about about pleasuring women okay. in bed. Mm. You know? But nobody really talks about uh, how to pleasure man. The male anatomy, how it works. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You have a, you have a, you have something to say? <laughs> Um okay that's exciting to know and also I'm happy that there's somebody who is talking to men about how to pleasure women. Yeah. Um don't get angry. It, I think we are making a societal shift before there was a whole patriarchal conditioning that has ma- had made it so hard for women to experience pleasure and yet women men needed to see women ex- experience pleasure. So now that the word is out there, now that women have been freed, now that women have been taught, so understand that yes the man, the male child has been left behind. We also need to pick him to measure up to this woman who has been educated or this woman who the men have been educated to pleasure. 
Okay. So it's not a bad thing they are doing for the women. Um, and we still have a long way to go. So it's also good that we bring the men up to speed. Uh, so do you think that women have a full, false understanding of the male anatomy? They or do. what pleasures men? They do. For example, a lot of women don't know that you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't play a lot with a, with a, uh, with a, with a hard on. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the base is already making it stand, so you can't you can't move it side by side. Mm. It's very painful. Mm. Okay. You know. Do men talk, communicate that to the women? Ah! You just you just you just flinch. You Actually, know? men don't. Men men do not know how to communicate their sexuality and sexual pleasure. They would rather go and communicate with somebody else. They don't tell the women. Men don't think women can handle rejection or can handle um, being told that what you did, this was good, this was bad. So they are good at lying to women and leading them on. So one of the things that men can do for themselves also is, you know, the whole conversation about consent, about what turns me on, what works for me. Because when we get to look at how to pleasure a man, again, I don't like to put all men in one basket. Right? I feel you everybody... You told me that, yes. Exactly. Everybody has different uh, sexual personality. You know, you were telling me how some men say the whole touch thing, out of touch, is 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 is, is BS to them. Yes. While others will tell you, for me, that's what I like. So there's the whole sensual out of touch, and honestly, scientifically, women need more touch than men. Yeah. Because men are aroused by what they see. So for men, it's it's playing with their sight. Yeah. If a woman Showing knows them those boobs. The boobs, the sensuality of the body, it's where they are lying. It's, it's, it's how confident you are in your body. It's, it's, they just want to see you use your body to talk as opposed to um, you, you know, getting to touching them. On the other hand, women, um, women need more touch and men give less touch. What I find ironic is that we are t well, in our society as well, they, get, they got it wrong. Um, we are taught how to pleasure men by massaging them. So the classes we have in Uganda is how to massage a man. You get married and all the while you have skin hunger. This man doesn't touch you because you spend most of the time massaging him and he's horny the moment you start touching, you know, just one part of the body. Then he wants to penetrate and you're not yet there. And then tomorrow he's not going to massage. He says, oh, no, I don't know how to do that. Then he won't allow you to go to a massage parlor to get a massage. Women experience touch hunger, yet they need it. And I tell you why. Men struggle to communicate emotionally. I think the biggest problem we have is men are not emotional. Uh, men do not know how to tap into their heart center. Men do not know how to have emotional holding power. Mm. Meaning when... That's another jargon. Okay, emotional holding power is when a woman begins to express how she feels about you and what she wants from you and how she wants you to do this. Or when she feels like she wants to cry or she wants to scream and you find it intense. It's not like you say, ah, no. And then you definitely say words like, oh, you're too sensitive. And then when she's intense for you, what happens for men is that uh, most men are actually avoidantly attached or dismissive. When the woman has been too intense for him, he will spend some time being away, which we call auto-regulation for men. Men go away not because they are disappearing from the woman, but they need to auto-regulate. Like they need to first take some time to take in this intensity before they can come for more. Now, because they don't know they're actually doing that, they don't know how to communicate it. So then he stays longer at the bar. He goes into work. Kumbe, he's just scared of the intensity that is waiting for him at home. So there are two things we experience. When a, a man goes into the man cave, he's looking for space, independence, autonomy. But actually, he's taken so much intensity that he needs some space to process it. Then he comes back for more. Then the woman feels left hanging because there was no communication about it. Right. And so she has the wrong language about it. So she will say, oh, maybe he's with somebody else or maybe lately I'm not good enough or maybe, you know, because he's gone away. You know, there's this there's, there's disconnection. So there's that bit because men have not been taught how to communicate their emotions and also express their needs. That's one of the things we are dealing with right now the biggest biggie right um so that being there if 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 what was the original point that we were talking about before we go to that we were talking about different love languages for men um, and we we're talking about how to specify emotional pleasure connection men. yes thank you mm. so because men don't verbalize their emotions um and and then they do not know how to sit with them when a man gives touch to a woman it's emotional 
touch is emotional. So if men learn how to touch more, that's how they get to connect with the woman and they're able to talk to her and they get to connect with her. But also on the other hand, when a woman touches a man, when a woman, so let's look at the massage from Uganda that you experienced because it's sensual. She falls into herself first. Then she brings a relaxed person. She brings a woman who is into her feminine energy and then she puts that on you. So she feels lighter on you. And then she's, she's like, um, releasing her love, her energies into you. So she's, she's, she's more into herself and then she's putting that, we call that sensual massage, right? When you're able to feel connected and and, and, from human, the touch. and humans can feel these energies. Yes, as emotional. Yeah. So then what you were experiencing was emotional connection because she was able to delve into her feminine energy. So she's able to create a connection, this energy connection, and that becomes one of the ways of connecting with men emotionally, right? So touch is how women bring their femininity into the man. It touches how a woman is able so to surrender into her femininity. You know, imagine a woman who's been out there. She's been in the boardroom. She's been running up and about. Nairobi's so big, you know. She comes back home and honestly, she needs some space to be able to fall into her softness because up there, she's been running the show, right? And we can't take that away. Now we have them. They are dutiful, and then they also want to be feminine. So one of the ways in which a woman can learn how to fall into her softness, because a man wants to feel her softness, is to use the power of touch. And then to use it is, first of all, to breathe, to learn to breathe, to go into that space, the bathroom, and breathe. Breath relaxes. Breath releases um, a lot of tox um, rather stress. It releases the pelvic floor muscles of the woman. So even when she's talking, she's able to speak from the depth of herself. When she's mourning, it is deep. You know? But when she's... when she's, The mourn is deep. Yeah, it is deep. When she's breathing, it's... Uh, oh. It's like... Not, it's not like... <laughs> you know? No, it needs to be... <laughs> it's to come from a deep place. But if she doesn't take some space and use that breath to calm her down, even receiving is going to be hard. So even coming to massage the man is going to be, yes. you know, rushed. It's not going to be that. A woman needs to be able to get into herself so she can be able to connect with the man. So it becomes emotional connection. So touch is actually emotional connection. And then you'll find that some men who don't like it. Like I said, for some men, um, physical intimacy is not their thing. Some men are sapiosexual. Some men want to connect with your brain. They want to hear how you talk. They want to understand how you understand the world. And that turns them on. So know your man's personality. What is their highest intimacy form? Some men want to first play with you before they can be able to mate with you. But now if you don't understand that, you're going to come and you're starting to touch him. I, I, I look at the different levels of intimacy. Um, there's physical intimacy. There's emotional intimacy. There's recreational intimacy. There's spiritual intimacy. There's intellectual intimacy. All those are ways in which to penetrate a man's mind. Mm. Yeah. Do you, do you mind expanding on each or that would take a lot of time? Um, just lightly. Um, when I say personality, lately uh, most people say, oh, understand his love language, but also understand his intimacy curve, like um, what comes first on his intimacy list. Um, if I had to ask you, if you had to connect with me in a way that makes it easy for, for you to be turned on, would you say when I play with you, when I go to watch a, a match with you, when I go to play tennis with you, when I go for a hike with you, when I, when I play with you, when I go for dance with you, would you say connect with me? That's one. That's now recreational intimacy. That people connect and turn each other on when they play together. Then there are those who, it's physical intimacy. So physical intimacy has been misunderstood. Physical intimacy goes beyond penetration. Physical intimacy is the little bam, bam, uh, bam bangs, right? Uh, physical intimacy is when you're able to come and sit on him and just rub your ass on him a little bit. Mm. Physical intimacy is when you, you know, come behind him and then massage his neck and then bite at his ear and you go away. Physical intimacy is when you cuddle and it doesn't have to lead to penetrative sex, but you're just putting your bodies together, right? Physical intimacy is touch beyond penetration, 
right? Mm. And for some people, that turns them on. They want to just be, um, you know, touching each other. You'll find there's a woman who complains, hey, but for you, you're just always banging me, touching me, you're fondling me, and it just infuriates her. It means the man has not understood her way, the way to her heart, the way to her vagina, right? So the same thing for the man. You'll find there's a man who loves that. And then if you find the two of you share that value, then that's your intimacy space, Right? And then now there's penetration. Penetration is the last, I, although the most heightened form of physical intimacy, but we go to it, or men go to it, underestimating these other levels of intimacy. So if she loves physical intimacy, like I love physical intimacy, I love to be touched, I love to be spanked, I love to be my hair to be pulled, I love my scalp to be, to be touched, I love my ears to be beaten at, I love you to come and play with my nose, I love you to touch me. I love that. By the time you come to me, Basically, you find rivers between my thighs. Mm. You will need to do a lot, right? Um, yet for another woman, it's probably um, spiritual intimacy. With the capacity to pray together. The capacity to hope together. The capacity to expound on um, what it feels like to use the spirit, you know, to engage with each other, to meditate together, to go into nature together, to be able to travel together. All those are elements of spirituality. Because when they make you connect with yourself, with the wider universe, and then they make you connect with God in different levels. So you find there are those who turn each other on spiritually because of the way they talk about spirituality. So mm. most people reduce spiritual intimacy to just prayer oh. and going to church. It is beyond that, right? And then there's intellectual intimacy. There are women who, if you talk to her, just look her in the eye and talk to her. You could just turn on everything else on her body by just talking to her. They're sap sapiosexual. Same thing with men. So you find there's a man who wants to hear your wisdom, your intelligence, um, the way you say the things that you say, the way you express your wild views, the way you express your ideas, the way you, you have emotional intelligence, the way you're able to draw your boundaries, the way you're able to communicate your needs. That turns them on more than the touch. So know your man. Mm. While we need all that, it's, it's a hierarchy for everybody. So I'll ask you, what comes first for you? <sighs> I, like, I, like, I like good vibes and talking about, uh, talking about uh, you know, uh, topics. I think I would, I would fall in the last one. You stop your sexual? Yeah. Okay. You know? Mm -hmm. I don't know if my wife knows about this. You should tell her. You should ask her. You should tell her. Hmm. Okay. That's. Do you think she has figured it out? There's no one who is an angel. No one. You didn't marry an angel. You married a human being. You have to be able to say what you want, what you need, and express it. Mm. Yeah. So imagining that she's figured it out. I know in relationships we say, you know, if she loves me, she should figure me out. That takes so long. Today you are, you're miserable because your wife is going to take five years to figure out if you're sapiosexual. Simply have a beautiful conversation and say, I get turned on. You could even penetrate it from an angle a day when she sounds brilliant or intelligent. You're like, babe, actually that turns me on. I love how you're able to phrase your words. I love your outlook to life. And I'm beginning to consistently understand that I'm turned on by intellectual conversation. Because every time you talk like that, you turn me on. You're trying to express to her that I would want to have more of these conversations with you. When we go on debts, I would want us to be able to, do, to understand that we are going to discuss ideas, to discuss things, you know. So she gets the idea, she gets the point. Then she starts finding out, so what interests him? When he wakes up, he likes to watch CNN. When he comes back home, he wants to talk about what was discussed on Citizen TV. When he comes back home, there's this book he picked up on, and then he's going to say this and that. I will ask him, share with me what you find. Um, I may not be able to read it, but I will show interest in a book that he's reading. So I'll be like, hey, babe, so how far with your book? Um, what have you found interesting? What's, what's exciting? And then learning how to listen to you. So that when you start talking about stuff, you know, she's able to listen to you, showing engagement and interest when you're that kind of person before she becomes that kind of person is how she would love you. Mm. Yeah. How do you prepare for... The other time, I think I was talking about how men should prepare women for what's it called sexual session. Okay. Is that what he said? 
I don't remember what's but I, but I think he was talking about on a day that you want to have sex with a man. Okay. Mafeka talked about how the man should prepare. How should the woman prepare? So he was talking about how a man prepares to take care of a woman, to have sex with a woman. Y yes. How should a woman prepare yeah. to have to pleasure the man or to have sex with a man? Uh, is there a difference? Yeah, there is a difference. Because your goal could be to pleasure the man. How do you prepare yourself to pleasure the man? Or how do you prepare yourself to have sex? Of course, sex is, um, is a two-way street. Sex is between two what people. What is the difference? There's, there's, I mean, people have sex with themselves sometimes. Mm. Yeah, you don't have to necessarily have sex with a man. All right. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, we have to be able to understand. I could prepare myself to have sex with myself. Mm -hmm. Then how I prepare myself to have sex with a man. I think you mean for me to talk about how does a woman prepare herself to have sex, you know, with a man. One, she needs to prepare her mind. Right? Um, emotion, most women do not think about the emotions that run through them. Um, so they are unaware of their emotions and how they shape their nervous system. So you find that she's either hypervigilant, so she's bad energy, she's like toxic, she's a neg negative. You know, you could come around a woman who feels like she's protected, you know, like she has guards around her. So, you know, like you're looking for angles in which to penetrate her or to talk to her, and they're not there. You just find yourself putting on your shoes and going to the bar. Cindy, yeah. right? But when you find a woman who is, who is like thrown back, receptive, she's smiling, she's enjoying something, she's eating something she likes, you just feel like she's good energy, she's good vibes, right? Yeah. So I say women need to be able to take care of their emotions because they determine their environment. They need to take care of their nervous system because when they don't process their emotions well, then their nervous system state is masculine. They are not in surrender state, mm. right? I go deep about that, um, but I like for women to be able to. Lately, I, I, I talk about function of freeze. So we, most women are so busy. There's no time for themselves. They don't squeeze any time for themselves. So they are looking functional on the outside, but on the inside, they are numb from life. Turning her own, like sensations take long, right? So turning her own takes so long. And that is because they don't take care of themselves fast. A woman needs to carve out an hour every day where it is self-care day. You know, what she eats, how she moves her body, her mind, her soul, she needs to nurture them for one hour every day of the 24 hours. If none of them is hers, she's not going to be receptive. Sexually. What does she do within the hour? Within the hour is to be able to eat something healthy that nourishes her and also mostly nourishes her cycle. So it gets that minimal. Um, the breakfast that you took, did it have healthy fats um, that are going to be able to allow you to have a healthy mind? The breakfast that you took, did it have probiotics that are going to allow you to be fluid or alkaline at the end of the day? So planning your breakfast needs to involve you knowing, I need probiotics, I need healthy fats, I need seeds and nuts in my breakfast. How that happens for you is your creativity, right? Then she needs to take care of her soul, her connection with herself, you know, being able to analyze, do I have negative thoughts about myself? Where? Is it my body that I'm hating lately? Is it my motherhood? Do I feel negative about how I'm raising my children? Is it my work? Do I feel undervalued at work? Or do I feel like what I do doesn't, um, you know, bring me value? Uh, you know, they need to assess where there's negativity in their lives. Um, that is how they take care of their souls. When they don't have time to like journal or time to sit with themselves and find out, am I happy in this area or am I not happy in that area? They carry around emotions which have nothing to do with you. Sadness, disappointment, lack of excitement, basically like a whole week. So imagine if a woman thinks she's not working well, she's not earning well, or she's, she's not valued by her children, or she doesn't feel she's good enough of a mother, what emotions are those? Those are emotions of sadness, of unworthiness. She can't bring good sex to you. So a soulful moment is when she's able to see through what makes, is making her negative and what's making her positive, right? So she needs to move. If a woman is not moving, she has stagnant energy. She's frozen on the inside. She needs to find a way to move, either to dance or to, um, you know, to, to do yoga or to go to the gym or to walk or to, there's no excuse. 20 minutes is all it takes for a woman to move her body. Most of the tension women have is around the hips, 
and you see that's where the pelvic floor, rather the pelvic floor area is where they need to be able to open up easily. So if there's a lot of tension, it's going to be easy for her to feel sensation. That's how they will, most of them will say they don't enjoy or experience orgasms when a man penetrates. They experience orgasms mostly from the clitoris. In as much as um, it's true, majority of women will experience orgasms from the clitoris, but also penetrative sex, a lack of, is because sensations are deep further away. Yeah. They're not closer because there's no movement. Blood is not moving. So they need to find some time, 20 minutes within that one hour. If 20 minutes is to pray, meditate, and journal. 20 minutes to be able to move. Then 20 minutes to be able to read something. They need to empower themselves, curiosity to be curious about themselves. They will eat the same food day in, day out. Ugali and nyama is cooked the same way every day. No, no curiosity, no asking, what different recipe can I bring to the table this week? Nothing. You know, they will wear the same, they will have the same clothing style. No curiosity. When jeans, they and, jeans and t-shirt. And sneakers. You know, there's no curiosity in life. They need to be able to empower their minds and open their minds and be exposed and read just 20 minutes a day. I know they're going to say it's too much, but I'd say one hour out of 24 hours is not, if none of that time is yours, then what are you doing? Be married to somebody. Why are you wasting someone's time? Mm. There are issues of sexual positions yeah. in the bedroom. Yeah. And uh, whether a man, a woman is on top, whether she's she's going down, the, mm. she's she's beneath you, the nun way, uh, you know, all these things. How do they play? What's your favorite sex style? <laughs> it is hot. <laughs> this is hot. <laughs> this is this is really really hot. <laughs> ah, my favorite sex style. Can we just go to the question? No, 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 no. This is the question. This is the first question that I've been asked in a podcast that I'm not able to answer. I am telling you, I'm telling you for sure. You caught me completely off guard. There's a way I wanted to ask that question that I think is gonna is gonna go against the grain. Okay. Hmm. Which question before you go out My, from... The favorite, the favorite sex, sex time. time. First tell us what's your favorite sex time. Like, no jokes. <laughs> what are they? What are the, which, which, are, which are some of the sex times that we First have? First tell us. I know. Even if there are many of them, at least there are some. Um, I think what you should not battle the, with... The woman on top. Okay, so cowgirl. The woman on top. So call what? Cowgirl. Cowgirl? Cowgirl style. <clears throat> Hey. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the one that you enjoy the most. That's 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 nice. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> and then there are others that I don't know their names. Yes. And I, yeah. Mm. And you want to know all of them. I don't know their names really. Mm. Mm. You haven't bothered to get the curve, you know, and, and learn all of them. Do you know if I put a camera in your bedroom, right? And I just filmed you and your wife making love. There are some sex styles we will capture that have not even been put down or documented. Oof. That's my approach to sex styles. We limit ourselves to which sex style is sexier, which sex style is cool, which sex style is going to make me, but for me, I go away from that. While sex styles are a way of being creative, we need to first of all understand that sex is dynamic. And we are fluid beings, right? And the goal is to get to making love. Whether you roll, whether the her ass is um, in in reverse mode, whether he, you know she's you know she's spooning or you're spooning her, whether she gets into Caesar position. Really, the idea is to find pleasure. We are pleasure hunters in that moment. We are not being staying in our heads, finding out. Okay, wait. So spooning is supposed to be like this. Angle, angle. Ah, ah, stay there. No, please flow. 
flow. Number okay. two, we have different physiologies. We have different bodies. You right? So based on your bodies, find your compatibility. Great sex is about compatibility. So I would tell you the best sex style is doggy, but that works for him. It doesn't work for you. Based on your body, vis-a-vis has, you know. And it's not about, you know, if a woman has um, big hips, what's the best sex style for her? Really, there's some big hips which are tight and timid. They're those which are, you know, they're easy to touch, to flow, to move, to, you know, do that. Again, it's compatibility. So I say flow, move, find your compatibility, name your style. Mm. So I need to ask you your favorite sex style based on your wife, not based on some other woman. Because if you had to make love to me, it probably might change. Exactly. That's what that 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 that's true, right? No, honestly, that's the thing. People limit themselves to what looks cool. What looks cool to somebody is I have uh, every time I discuss sex styles in bridal showers, right? I find that women want to talk about the sex styles that look good um, in picture because you know because of the men. Men are visual, so any style where he's looking at you, where he's seeing your eyes, when he's looking into your eyes, where he's seeing his favorite parts, and for every man they're different. You may love boobs, and another man loves the ass. Another one loves the legs. Another one loves the flow of her hair. You know the sway of her hair. Another one just loves her lips to look. I mean, I ask women, what does he love about you? Sell that. Show him that. Mm. Right, because I could come into cowboy, or rather into cowgirl, and then I am showing you what doesn't turn you on. Mm. So if you tell me what turns you on about me, that's what I'm going to work on. Again, women are always changing their bodies, so I tell them that you need to find out. It's not like you you need to ask for consent all the time, but find out what does he love about you, what physically turns him on, because men are physical, right? So if he loves how my hair flows, the color of my hair, and then I go and cut it off. Haven't I taken away his visual turn on? You have, yeah. Exactly. What if he loves my lips looking natural and moist, right? And then there's trends that come. Or mate lipstick, you know, and, all, and then I start covering up and then looking dry and chapped all the time. Am I not taking away his visual nutrition? Right? Visual nutrition. Ex- yeah, you know, because... Yeah. Optical nutrition is what it is for the men, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if I know what turns you on about me physically, I will sell that. But also when it comes to sex positions, we need to be able to flow and roll, then name our positions. Mm. Okay? Because the feeling is more important than the seeing. Mm. If you look at my boobs... How about how I feel when you... Do you get to turn me on when I'm in cowgirl? Rather, do, you, do I get to come when we're in cowgirl? Because for you, I, you might like me in cowgirl because of the way my boobs are chopping over my chest and then, you know, the way you're looking at me morning and then my hair falling and everything is looking good for you. But I, maybe I'm not coming. Mm. Maybe I'm not orgasming. So then are you caring about my feeling or are you caring about your sight, sense of sight? Can we come in the middle? then you need to ask me what's my favorite sex style. Where is it that you get to me? So that when I tell it to you, for most women I find, they will say it's missionary style. But guess what? On the street, they will say missionary style is kife kiamende. You call it chamende. Kife chamende. Okay. You know, like, oh no, that's the most boring sex style because you look lazy. Who says? There's so many ways in which you can move. It's all about the art of sex. You know, because I could be cowgirl and they just come and fall on you like that. You know, but if I have movement, if I have sway when I'm coming into the girl position, then that's different from when I just come and fall down on you, right? So it's the same thing. Missionary, the missionary style is where most women will orgasm. But they don't say it lately because then you're going to say she's boring. She's old fashioned. But now what if that's where I orgasm? Will you take that away from me? Mm. Yeah. Mm. The women, there are men who say that she's very, that they, they don't like it when 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 women are giving them a blowjob because of the teeth, some women don't know how to use the... You have a... <laughs> some men do not know how to. Yeah. 
I mean, women have it very difficult, dif- difficult playing with the with the fellas. Yeah, mm. um, that's very true. Um, women do not understand um, how to touch, how to press, when to touch, when to press, um, when to use the lips. So I always tell them that you need to be able to use um, the the ice cream sucking method, like to mm. like. So it's the, the, the lips that are supposed to touch the dick, not the teeth. So if I I'll put pressure using my lips as opposed to Oh, I see. You know, uh, allowing the dick to be in the mouth. The, the dick doesn't just go in, a, in the mouth by itself. It needs to be guided by the lips. Mm. And then given a pout by, by, by the lips. Like. <laughs> Dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. Um, where do we? Where should women learn these things? I mean, they are they are, they are biting us, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> you could give them my number. <laughs> hey, I, I I do take them through practical classes. I also host events called Design Desirability, where we come to talk about sexuality and and yeah. So they could come for my events as well. Are this are these events taped? Um, no, mm. they are highly exclusive. Highly exclusive. Yeah. Ah, yeah. okay. So we are going to. I'm hoping that we will do a series <coughs> yeah. around this thing because I, re, I, I think women and other people will really love it, and I also love it for my podcast. Uh, I everybody who comes to my podcast, if they have a gig that they are doing, if they have a consultancy they are doing, if they have got products they're selling, I give them an opportunity mm. to talk about those products. I have different hormonal reset bundles for men and women. The ones for women are mostly to support healthy kidneys, healthy liver. Uh, when the liver is healthy, it processes estrogen and other hormones that are not needed by the body easier so then they can stay wet, they don't have infections, and then their hormones are balanced. So I, did, I designed different programs for women. One of them is the Hormone Reset Program, uh, geared towards helping women deal with endometriosis, fibroids, um, PCOS, um, hypothyroidism, excuse me, hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism, um, you know, like uh, also be able to allow them to, to take care of their cycles in a healthy way so they don't have cramps, they don't have mood swings, they don't have low libido issues, they don't have skin issues, you know, so the hormone reset bundle is to support a woman learn how to take care of her body as a woman, <clears throat> okay? Um, the Hormone Reset Bundle has smoothies that help women to be able to take care of their sexuality as well, their fertility as well. So the Hormone Reset Bundle is set with that. It has hubs that are able to take care of the woman internally. So she can be she can be able to feel alive. She can be able to be wet. She can be able to have good skin and good confidence. She can feel the vibe from the inside. So she can illuminate it from the on the outside. I also have um, emotional reset programs. Uh, one is called Whole and Worthy. This is a femininity class for women who want to fall back into, learn how to fall into their femininity, but not lose their masculinity. So I teach women how to balance their feminine and masculine energies so that they can be able to, you know, choose how they want to show up in the world. Yeah, so that's whole and worthy, teaching women how to um, understand and respond to their intuition, build feminine magnetism, uh, learn how to receive, to receive men, to receive, um, you know, pleasure, to receive gifts, to receive help from other people, to receive. Because when we say receive, receiving, when a woman knows how to receive a man, she will know how to receive help from friends. She will know how to receive support from workmates. She will know how to receive uh, wisdom from the universe and from God. So teaching women femininity is teaching them the power of receiving. Um, then also how to be magnetic, you know, to be able to switch to, to magnetism used to be a good thing. You know, we used to communicate less or to say less. We just used to be magnetic. We used to be mysterious. Yeah, so it's taking women back into the beauty of femininity um, in as much as the world has taught them how to be masculine. Yeah, we've come to a place where we recognize that feminism taught women how to be able to bring out their masculine energy. But then only having that has made the men, you know, and now we are calling upon us to balance it, to not let go of that, but then to also tap back into what used to make them mostly beautiful. Mm. So the program is called Wall and Body. I have one called Revive. Revive. Some women are not, or some men and women are not able to 
you know, like experience pleasure in life because of the wounds that they've experienced in their childhood. Um, they are still surviving life. They are still adapting from perfectionism. They are adapting from codependence. They don't know how to express their needs. They're people pleasers. Um, you know, they manipulate men. They um, they play victim a lot. They do, they are over, overtaking care of men. They are mothering men. They don't know how to draw the line. They don't know how to draw boundaries. They don't know how to respect their own boundaries. Most women don't even know how to express their own needs, right? So Revive helps women to be able to find out how they were loved, their attachment styles, how they attach to men and other people in their lives so that they can be able to heal the unhealthy bits about that. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Great. Talk, talk a little bit more in, in conclusion about the event. The design durability. Yeah. So design durability is a space that we've created for us to come and play. It's a dance and dying experience. We dance kizomba. Kizomba is a sensual dance. Um, sensuality is what I use to be able to teach women and men to free up themselves. So D&D is for both men and women. is to allow us to come and have candid conversations about healthy sexuality. You know, um, so we have different topics most of the time. But what brings to us together is dance. Dance as a way of learning healthy intimacy. Dance as a way of learning how to surrender to the other. Dance as a way of learning how to take in um, a man's leading, a man's um, guidance, a man's. So we use Kizomba to be able to train the differences between masculinity and femininity between men and women. Um, while we are talking about um, healthy uh, ways of bringing out our sexuality and sensuality. Yeah. Is it a tango dance? Sorry? Is it, is it a tango? Does it take two to come to this event? No, no, no. You find your dancing partner over there. Because the way Kizomba is trained or the way they we, we, we take through it, we interchange. Because Kizomba is a touch, is a contact spot. And and, and and more we bring out the element of healthy touch, you know. You it's don't have Kizomba. To... Kizomba. Kizomba. Yeah. That's Uganda, no? No, no, no. No, no, no. It's not oh, I'm going to invite you. Please do. Yeah. You will be one of the people that I will dance with. You'll dance with. Yeah. You are a good dancer? I'm I'm just learning Kizomba actually, but mm. I love dance. Yeah, mm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming to this to to this podcast. You mean really, coming? Yeah, not with the with, not with the you. Okay. <laughs> Do you come a lot? A lot, all the time. Mm. Every chance I get. Ah. Yeah. It's a mystery to other women. Nothing. Really. Good really? on. Yeah. You know? I think we one of the topics that we discuss is the orgasm gap. One day, I hope we get to discuss it. Why most people are not, or women are not orgasming is because there's a gap. There's a misunderstanding of what an orgasm is, even by the women themselves. Again, when I start talking, I will not stop. You have to stop me. You know, women misunderstand oh, will, their orgasms. I will, I, will, I will invite you again. Yeah, so um, I, I feel bad when there's a woman out there who doesn't orgasm I um, for women. And I feel bad for a man when he's not able to watch his woman orgasm because I, I know men find their power when they reduce a woman to smithereens. Mm. Hey. <laughs> so we need to work on that. Yeah. yeah, we'll mm -hmm. talk about that again. Yeah, okay. You know? Okay, so we finished this uh, podcast. And